hey guys this is Eve with scrapbooking with me and this is what we're going to make and it's going to take us two videos just because I made so many flowers but I don't think it would take you that long I, I had to figure out all the measurements but I'm going to have free PDFs for you that have the measurements and everything already drawn out for you all you have to do is print them off trace them and you're ready to go but this I am calling a flower pot purse for Mother's Day. But um, I don't know what part might be a purse other than it does have a handle. Now, my handle I made where it would slide back and forth. You can see I put brads in there where it would go back and forth. But I didn't make it long enough or I made my flowers too tall, one or the other. So if you want your handle to be able to fold over and back, you can go ahead and make your handle 24 inches instead of the 18 that I tell you in the video. But I'm going to have uh, PDFs for all of this, the chipboard sizes, the mat sizes, everything, the little bottom piece. I'll have a few flower PDFs, but I cut most of these with using my Cricut, so... Um, I won't have all of these, but I'll have a few flower PDFs over there for you if you want to grab those that I have just drawn out. They probably won't be as pretty as these, but uh, maybe you can use them if you don't have access to a Cricut. All right, let's get into making this project. I can't get it all in the screen because it's pretty tall, pretty big. As you can see, that's my hand. Let's see how tall it is. Uh, it is 12 inches with handle and all and then it is about 10 wide considering the, your flowers that come over the side and the little butterflies all right let's get into making this project so we're going to start out with some medium weight chipboard this is going to be the bottom and it is five and a half by four all right then you're going to need two side pieces and they need to be seven by six. This side and this this side. And then you need two end pieces and they are five and a quarter by six. There and there. And then you're gonna need one base piece and it is four and a half by six. So we're gonna lay that aside for a little while. We're not gonna need that right now. Now you, you see, these are too big to fit on there. So what we're going to do, I'm going to lay these side pieces down for a second. What we're going to do is, so I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ruler on this piece, and I'm going to find my center, and that's it right there. And then I'm going to mark it, and then I'm going to find my center on here. So that would be two. And it's right there. Now, all I need to do is match those two center marks up just like that. And then I know that right here at this end and right here at this end, I need to trim off. So I could have given you that measurement to trim off there, but it is five eighths of an inch and five eighths of an inch on each side looks like let me measure that again that's five eighths and that's five eighths but the the easiest way that i know of is just to mark your centers like i did right there put your little marks together and then make a mark on either side and that's where we're going to cut from now i'm going to show you how we're going to cut this you're going to put your ruler on this mark down here and then right at that point up here we're going to cut this in an angle it's not going to cut straight up just like that and you're going to do this side the same way just like that so we're going to cut down that line and down that line. That's going to make this base the same width as that, but it's going to make the top flange out like we want it to 
in order to be able to um, make this look more like a flower pot. So I'm going to take my big trimmer. This is my guillotine trimmer. And I'm going to put that in there just like that. And then I'm just going to chomp that off. So we cut that part off. Now let's go to this side. And we cut that one off. See what I'm talking about? It makes it flare out at the top. Let's go ahead and just mark this one using this piece. That makes it a little bit easier too. You don't have to do so much measuring. So make sure that you get your tops even. And then just mark it. There we go. Now, these Tim Holtz scissors will cut this. I don't know if you have any scissors that will cut yours or not. It's a little bit more difficult, but it will cut it. So you could cut this with your scissors if you want. I'm going to cut this one piece with my scissors, and then I'll probably cut the rest of them with my trimmer. It just makes it a little bit easier for me. Now I'm just going to lay these together and make sure that I got them straight and looks like I do. Alright, so those are my side pieces, or my end pieces. Now we're going to do the sides. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to take this side... All right, now find your center of your seven inch side. Make sure that your six inch side is still running up and down. That's always gonna stay the same. So right there, three and a half. So we're gonna mark that. Then we're gonna find our center on the long side of this. And it looks like it's two and three quarter. So we're gonna mark that right there. Then we're just going to match up our marks. Let me make it a little bit darker so you can see. There's our marks. We're just matching those up. And then I'm just going to mark at the end. Make a little mark. Like that. That is just easier for me to do that than it is to try to measure because sometimes you cut a little bit different. And if you do, then you're not going to be able to get the right measurements on the ends like this. Now that's three quarters of an inch from the end on each end. But, you know, to me it's just easier to do it this way. But you can do it either way that you want. Now you're going to put your ruler on that mark right there. Up at the corner. And just draw that line. Mark right there. And then up at the very point and just draw that line like that and we're going to cut this off and I'm going to use my guillotine cutter just because it's a little bit easier on my hands okay there we go we have all of our pieces cut I'm just going to make sure these are the same and they are now we're ready to start assembling our little container here this is going to go together just exactly like it would if we was building a box. We're going to put our construction strips on here. And then you're going to put these sides on like this and put your construction strips on. So I'm going to go ahead. I What I have done is I found the paper that I want to use. And I went ahead and cut up some cardstock that matches the paper now I had some of this already cut but I went ahead and cut a few more pieces this is going to match my paper because this is going to be the paper that I'm going to use to cover it with so this is going to match and then that way all of my chipboard is going to be covered and it's going to look just like that I had a full coverage of paper underneath my mats all right now all we're going to do here is we're going to cut these off And 
and I'm going to cut my base pieces. Alright, that base piece will go on the inside. So I need one more base piece. I need two for the outside on the ends and two for the insides on the ends. Now anybody who doesn't know what construction strips are, I'm going to leave a link below where I talk about how to make the construction strips. It's just a good way to assemble chipboard without trying to use glue and, you know, it fall apart on you. Okay, I'm going to save that little piece for later. Now I'm going to need four of these. Okay, so there are, are my bottom pieces inside and out. Now on these side pieces right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these a little bit extra long so that I can fold them over at the top so this point of the chipboard is not going to show either. When I put it together, then I can fold this top over. And let's see. I think that will be enough right there. That should be long enough. That looks like about uh, a half an inch. So that should be quite enough. So let's go ahead and cut another one of those. That one's not quite long enough. Now we're going to take these bottom pieces and we're going to cut them at an angle starting at the open end make it look like a little arrow like that and then I'm just going to go ahead and cut these others so that we'll have them ready. I'm just going to cut all of them at an angle. So you're just going to pull the backing off of one side of your score tape and I'm going to put that on right there, flip it around, do the same thing on the other end. Put it right up at the end of your chipboard. Now these pieces are going to attach like that. So all we need to do Just take the backing off of this side. You're going to butt it right up against that other one. Okay, then you're going to take the backing off of this end. You're going to do the same thing. Now you can just lay it down like this. Since this is the inside, you can just lay it down like this, making sure that it's straight, and press that over. And see they fold up and then we can do our side pieces so I'm going to pull the backing off of one side of my chip one side of my construction strip and I'm going to start it right at the end of that chipboard and run it all the way down and that shows you why we cut a little bit of an angle there on those just so that it wouldn't get in that bend for that so that it wouldn't have bulk right there in that bend. Alright now let's do the other side. Okay you're gonna put it right at the end and right up against the edge of the chipboard. Your fold should go right at the edge of that chipboard right there. And then press it down. I always burnish it down. That helps everything stay together. Pull the backing off of that. You're going to lay that up. And I'm going to have to hold it up so I can see the end of my chipboard, I think. Maybe not. Maybe I'm not getting my head in the shot. Just pull that up as tight as you can get it and press that down. And yes, I'm just using all pink construction strips. Even though this is going to be on the inside, I just I just cut all pink ones since I had extra scraps. All right, we did the same thing on that side. So there is the beginning 
of your flower pot purse. As you can see, that's the way it's going to look on the outside. All right, now while we've got this apart, I'm going to go ahead and put my cover in for the base. This piece is cut at just shy of four. Remember, we have to go just shy in order to get it to fit in here. And then it's cut at five and three eighths. So we're going to go ahead and put this piece down here and that that'll make it easier. We won't have to worry about putting that piece down when we get the sides put together. And when you put this down, just make sure that you keep it away from your folds. Make sure that your sides will still fold up. And your end pieces before you press it down. Okay, now we can put our strips up through here and go ahead and join the sides. So I want to make sure I got the right strips here. All right, now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put these on the outside because I cut these strips a little long so that they could fold over from the outside. So I'm going to put these on the outside and we can go back and put some on the inside when we get the little vase put together. So what you want to do is start your construction strip right down at the edge or the end of your chipboard run it up just like that you're going to leave that piece sticking up and just go all the way around doing that same thing okay so you've got your construction strip on here 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 and here and that's going to pull this up and glue that together so you only have to put it on four corners Now we're going to pull the backing off of this side and you're going to pull those pieces together just as tight as you can and then you're going to lay that piece over. And Before I press it down well I like to look on the inside and make sure that it's closed up. have right there okay let's pull this one off you're gonna hold that up just as straight and as tight as you can on top and bottom I like to make sure that the ends are even And this is easier done when you're not trying to film, believe me, because you can help kind of hold it up against you. Okay, now on this right here at the top, all you need to do is cut out just a little bit of a groove in that, just about like that. See how I split it? And then you're just gonna fold that over and it's going to lay down in there and that's going to cover your little corners okay you're going to pull this one off pull that up lay it together as tight as you can I'm trying to keep from it being any gaps and like I said it's a lot easier when I can hold it up against me it gives me that little bit of leverage that you need but before you press it down real tight, just lay it over and press it down like that. Okay, now again, you're going to snip that right in that, where that score line is. And then you're just going to fold it over. And that covers that end of your chipboard. All right, let's see if we can get this one on without me letting it slip. Now you can go ahead and put your art glitter glue on here if you want, 
that just helps it stick. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and take our outside pieces and put on here to cover that. Now on these, you're gonna fold them. Well, I'll show you. When you put this on, put it just a little bit above the end of that chipboard. Because you're gonna need to fill in that gap that's right there. So I always put mine just a tiny bit above it. And then when you put this on there, and I'm going to go ahead and add a little art glitter glue. When you fold that over, then you've kind of got that fold in that crease on your chipboard. Like that. So we're going to do this all the way around. If you have a little piece like that right there sticking over, just trim it off even. You rather have a little bit sticking over and that way it covers your corners down here. Don't let it be too short. Okay, there we go. We have the outside covered. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put some pieces right around the top here. That's going to help finish off that top. So right there. Then you're going to fold that over just like that. And that's going to finish off your top. Okay. I'm going to go to this side. I'm cutting these just a tiny bit at an angle, not very much. Alright, there you go. Now all we need to do is run our bum folder straight down that to make that top flat. And there we go. Now all we need to do now is put our base on we're going to put some strips on the inside to finish that out and then put our mats on here okay now we have just cut some strips and we're going to put those right down on the inside just like that well really they're going to go like this like that so you just measure and cut your strips for the inside now i'm going to put art glitter glue on these because need just a little bit of wiggle room since I'm putting them on the inside and you're going to cup it up like that and just stick it all the way down in there making sure that that score line is right in that crease and then just press it down really well on both sides like that so that's gonna finish the insides off all right now look at that isn't that nice now all we need to do is put our mats on put our little handle on and put our flowers in there and I still had plenty of construction strips left so we will put these in our little container over here and we'll keep those for a later date now I'm going to go ahead and cover this little base piece right here. This piece is five and a half by seven. That will cover our base. And we're just going to put a lot of art glitter glue down on here. And then just kind of center it up. It doesn't have to be perfect but just center it up like that. Then you just need to trim your corners. And 
And then again, I'm going to use our glitter glue here. So there we go, there is our base covered. And I, I'm gonna go ahead and cover this bottom piece. Ooh, that'll fit right there. All I need to do is trim a little bit off of the side. So I'm gonna trim it about right there. And then that'll fit. And I'll tell you the size of this just in a second. I mean, you see how I measured it. As long as it covers all of that chipboard, that's what you're looking for. Okay, so this piece is four and an eighth. You could do it four and a quarter by five and a half for the bottom piece. So this is going to, once we get this done, once we get the sides on and everything, this is going to sit on there just like that. So you'll have just a tiny bit showing all the way around. It's going to, about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Okay, so we're going to lay that aside for a while and let that dry. Then we can go ahead and start putting our inside pieces on and our mats on the outside. So we're ready to go ahead and start gluing in our inside mats and our outside mats. I have cut these. Now what I'm going to do for you guys, just so that you won't have to do all of these crazy measurements and that kind of thing, is I have made templates for the inside and the outside and I will load them up on a PDF and I'll give you those templates. That way you can just print them out, trace them, and cut them out. You won't have to do all of the figuring up of these crazy measurements like I did but we are going to put some art glitter glue on here and for some reason I can't hit my paper today I keep putting art glitter glue on my mat and then this is going to be the end now the end pieces I've got all of these pieces to where they fit really snug because we didn't want a lot of that uh, pink showing we just want a little bit of frame around it like that so so you can see let's go ahead and put the other end in that one goes there and i always like to dry fit them just in case that i might have cut a little crooked like i did right there and i have worked your templates out so they should be correct Cut mine actually before I made the templates and they will be free to you um, I'm still trying to give you the templates free as much as I can anybody all you need to do is just make sure that you are a subscriber of our channel and you can have the free templates that just helps me out a little bit if you subscribe and if you um, watch any of the ads that come on that just kind of helps me out a little bit helps me keep the channel going and gives me the money to buy the new products and that kind of thing so that I can demo things for you I don't make a lot but I might make 25 cents if you click on an ad all right these are the side ones Sorry, I hope I didn't get my head in the shot. I'm trying my best not to. So you can see how that's fitting. I've got it pretty close. You can just barely see a little bit of that pink here and there. Not much at all. And that's what I wanted. I wanted it to fit pretty snug. That is the inside. 
Now most of this inside is not going to show once we get our, um, we're going to have to put a little bit of grass or something down in there to hold our picks for our flowers. A lot of this is not going to show, but I wanted to cover it anyway for the parts that is going to show. Now this is the paper that we're going to use on the outside. I think this paper is gorgeous. This come from the Capri, the new Capri paper from Prima. So we're going to put this on the outside. I will try to link it below. I don't think we have any more of it. If we do, it may just be an 8x8 pack, but I will try to link it below if I can find it somewhere. Okay, and you can see that these, the outside mats are going to match up really well. They just have a tiny bit of that pink showing. There we go. All right, we'll go ahead and put this one on this side. Okay, that is all of our mats on. Isn't that pretty? I think that is really pretty. I'm going to put a little bit more adhesive right here. Okay, so that is the bottom part. Now we can put our base on, or we can put this on the base. And what I'm going to do is kind of mark it with my pencil so that when I start to glue everything down, I'll get it somewhat even. Let me make sure. Looks about right, right there. Okay, so I'm going to put quite a bit of glue on here. There we go. Got the base on. I'm going to flip it over and press on that really good. So now you can see what the base looks like. Okay, this is all we're going to do today because tomorrow I'll put all these flowers in here and we're going to make most all of the flower well we're going to make all of the flowers but I'm going to have some of them already pre-cut and assembled so that it doesn't take us all day long but tomorrow we will come back and put the flowers in here and then we'll put the the handle on and we're going to have a handle that will fold over or stand up either one we're going to put it on with some brads so tomorrow we'll come back and do that and then we may do a little bit more embellishing on the outside i'm not sure yet i'm going to look around and see what else i have but this is going to be a fantastic mother's day flower pot purse all right guys that is it for this video and i will see you back tomorrow so that we will be able to put all the flowers in here and finish this little flower pot up we'll talk to you guys later thanks so much for watching bye bye